friends, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, I'm so happy you're here. My name is Tina Zink and I'm an independent demonstrator in Nova Scotia, Canada. And for those of you returning, welcome back. I'm excited to share another fun technique with you today and this is called the mirror image technique. If you have never seen this before, brace yourself because you're going to be mind blown with what you can do with your stamps and those of you who have seen this before this will be a great uh, demonstration refreshing you on this really really cool technique I can't wait to show this to you so let's start stamp my favorite way of using this mirror image technique is with our silicone mats now my silicone mat is very well loved and it's actually got some staining I think it was from my brush pigment powders but this still works but this I find gives the best results and of course all the products I'm sharing with you can be purchased through my online store if you live in Canada or you can go to stampnap.com and find a demonstrator near you and these are not expensive I'm actually going to get another one and set it aside just for the mirror image and I'm also going to be using our stamp apparatus so the first card I'm going to make is going to be easy easy and it's just going to be stamps, ink, and paper. So I have a piece of basic white cardstock uh, cut at eight and a half by five and a half and scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So I have my standard size card base. And for this card, I'm going to use our Darling Donkeys stamp set. I know many, many of you have been getting this with your celebration rewards, um, which ends, by the way, the end of February. And this has been such a popular set. And how could it not be? It is stinking adorable. So for this card, I am going to use this little guy. Okay, so I'm just going to bring my stamp apparatus in. I'm just going to put my silicone mat right on top let me slide this down so you can see all right so it's right up in the corner and I'm just gonna put my my dear old donkey right there doesn't matter where you're putting him for this particular card anyways now I'm gonna ink up my donkey and I'm using my black memento ink pad because I'm gonna color him with my uh, stamp and blend markers and I've actually recently re-inked this ink pad, so it's really um, got a lot of ink on it. But I'm going to go ahead and stamp down a second time just to get a really um, good inky image on there. Okay, if I move my hand, you can probably see it a bit better. So now I'm going to bring in my card. And when you flip this over, can you see how you can see through this? Even with the staining that I have on my uh, silicone mat. But I'm just going to put it right down onto my card. And I'm just going to push down nice and firm on the image. I'm not rubbing because I find if you do that, you're going to get like, your, your lines are not going to be as crisp. They're going to smudge a little bit. So I just push down. You can take your block, you can push down, but I, I honestly find just, just pushing down is fine. And lift off and holy Toledo, look at that, will ya? He's facing the other way. So now I'm going to take my little donkey again. Let's see, I'm going to have to reposition him. So I've cleaned my stamp because I want to position this on my card without getting any ink where I don't want ink. Let's just do that. And kind of make it so their ears are touching. So cute. Push down. Ink them up again. Look at, well, yeah, look at how cute that is. If you have never seen the mirror image technique before, I bet you you are watching right now going, oh my gosh, that is crazy. I have to try that. Yes, yes, you do. Okay, so I'm going to clean my stamp. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's add a little sentiment. We're gonna go, hey there, friend. How the heck are you? 
What's a happening, hot stuff? Where you been? What's going on? And all that fun stuff. And I am actually going to do this in a different color. I have no idea what color. Let's just go with uh, Bermuda Bay. Just because I want to add a pop of color to this card. I love the Stamparatus because we can just keep on stamping till we get it good and dark. Fabulous. I love it. All right, I am going to do some lickety split coloring. And I'm going to speed it up for you while I do that. I am just using my, what color are these? I'm using Smoky Slate, and now I'm just taking the blender pen and just kind of working it in a little bit. And I'm gonna do my other donkey in crumb cake. Now I'm taking my light pink and adding a little bit on their nose, their muzzles, I should say, and their ears. And as I was coloring this, I was thinking, and I know some of you are thinking the same thing, yes, but Tina, the ink is going to show up on the other side. You're right, it is. So, you know what? We could either, either leave it like that, or, and this is what happens, I start stamping and then I change my mind. I'm like, oh wait, let me, let me change that. So, I'm going to take down an eighth of an inch on both sides so that it's four in total and five and a quarter across and then I'm gonna grab some Bermuda Bay cardstock and now my sentiment is gonna match my cardstock alrighty so it appears that I am completely out of Bermuda Bay cardstock so I will be ordering some of that today um, and I decided to go with old olive because I am going to add grass on the bottom to ground my little guy so don't doesn't look like they're you know sitting and levitating on the card so that old olive will then coordinate and I'm going to use my water painter that looks like too much water we shall see and memento ink is not like the most waterproof in the world so you don't want to get too much water um, on the uh, outline. So I'm just going right across and then I'm just gonna pull some of that ink in. Okay, and I love combining my stamp sets. So I just took a quick look through my stamps because I wanted grass or something to kind of put on here. So I just pulled out my Grace's Garden stamp set. If you have this at home and you haven't played with it for a while, time to give it some love because this is a beautiful, awesome stamp set. And it's, it needs love from me. So I'm using this today. Um, let's see now. Let's go with the hollyhocks, which are my, my favorite flowers. Well, garden flowers. I love the traditional uh, English garden flowers. Ink pad. Okay. We're going to put that right here and guess what you know what I'm doing don't you if you've guessed I'm stamping on the fly again you have guessed correctly because you know I do that all the time so I just knew what technique I wanted to show you I didn't know what design I was gonna quite do yet I'm gonna stamp this right there and one more. Let's go with this one right here. We'll snap this one. You know what would have been really cute? And if I had more time, I would have masked this little guy and then stamped this on top. That would have been adorable. But I, I have other things to show you. Other things to show you. All right. Let me finish coloring this. Okay, so 
So there's my little coloring done. And all I'm going to do is take my aqua painter and a little bit of seaside spray. And I'm just going to lightly outline around my donkeys. Because I don't want to do a whole whack of blue to make it look like sky. But I do want to add a little bit of blue um, just to go around. And you can do this with a soft gray. You can use a blender pen. Um, and you don't have to make it perfect. But I like how it does add a bit of dimension and color. So I'm just kind of going around my flowers. Isn't that cute? Very, 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 very easy. And fun. Really, really fun. And you can, you know, keep the coloring as simple as you like. Maybe we need to add some ribbon. I should have pulled in that, uh, that Bermuda Bay a little bit better. I didn't, didn't really think when I was doing this, but that's okay. Wait till you see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my white seam binding and my Bermuda Bay ink pad. And I'm going to dye it. And this will take a couple minutes to dry. But I really wanted to add a pop of Bermuda Bay onto this card to tie in with the sentiment. So yeah, I now have Bermuda Bay ribbon. Okay, so I'm just taking my stamp and seal and I'm just gonna go up the edges. Add some more seal. And put that on my card. Come so. My handy dandy bow maker. I know you guys have seen me use this in other videos. I just love this. And there's my card. Turned out pretty cute. There's no die cuts. There's no punches. It's literally stamps, ink, and paper. And a little bit of ribbon. But didn't that come out adorable? And look at there's no other way you can do that unless you know the mirror image technique. Awesome to know. All right, let me show you some more ways you can use this technique. Here's another card I made also using the Darling Donkeys. I got a little crazy with this card. I had a little bit of fun. Okay, a lot of fun. Um, do you recognize the card layout? This is that half fold card layout. I'm so glad so many of you love that. Isn't it a great uh, card layout? And I'm still using it myself, as you can see on this card. Mirror image, my little donkeys. I also made little eyelashes. Some of you have probably already been doing that, but I never thought about it, and I think the eyelashes are adorable. And then when you open it, shazam! This little guy is also a mirror image because if you look, if you stamp him like normal, he's going this direction. This one's going the other direction. So he's the mirror image of this. And I wanted to use all my donkeys on this card. And I just had a lot of fun with this. And this is going to my girlfriend to let her know I miss her. She's been on my mind because good things in life are better with her. And adventure awaits because before we know it, this whole COVID thing is going to simmer down and we can start doing fun things with our friends and travel and do different things. So this is going in the mail to her. Next card. This one, again, very, very simple. Stamps, ink, and paper. Let me show you the stamp set. This is the Enjoy the Moment stamp set. 
And um, you may think, hmm, that stamp set's not so much fun. It is. It's a really, really fun stamp set. And I love the fonts in this, and I really wanted to stick with neutral colors when I made this card. So this is the mirror image. And I did it exactly the same way that I just showed you. So you see, if you stamp it, it goes that way. But on here, it's going that way. So when you're making these cards at home, consider um, doing this with flowers and leaves, not just... Um, not just little characters, even though characters are really, really fun with the mirror image. So stamps, ink, and paper. Simple, simple. I started kicking things up a notch, going back to that half fold card design. And my friend, who's also a demonstrator here in Canada, she's in New Brunswick, her name is Erin, and she sent me a card that she had made using the half-fold card. She actually did quite a few cards, they were all amazing, but she did one with the mirror image, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I am doing my next video on that technique. I said, can I share your card? So I'm going to post her card on my blog, um, but she used this stamp set, and... Um, I just loved using the seahorses with the mirror image. So I went a little bit cray cray on this card, but it was so much fun. Ready? Shazam! There's a whole sea world going on in there. So I used the designer series paper, I used my stamps, um, my dies, this sweetly stitched dies, which I'm like totally obsessed with. But look at my seahorses! They're looking at each other, saying together is the perfect place to be couldn't do that if you didn't have the mirror image technique in your arsenal. And Erin um, also made a comment. I'm like, that's brilliant. When you have our silicone craft mat, basically you are doubling all of your stamps because you can do this mirror image. And I'm like, that is absolutely true. Brilliant. And if you don't have a silicone craft mat, you need to get one. All right, another card uh, for show and tell here. This is made with a touch of ink, which is also the celebration um, stamp set. And I went a little bit over the top on this card because this is for a really special friend of mine. She loves butterflies. She loved purple. So I added beads because I was in that kind of mood last night when I was working on this. And there's like amethyst crystals on there. Yeah, just fun. Maybe a little bit... I don't know. I don't care. It was fun and she's going to love it and that's all that matters. Um, the background was the... Um, mm, 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 was this block, which is block E. Block E, yes. And all I did is I just added on my ink pads. So I went tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap with all my different colors. And then I spritzed it lightly with water. And then I pushed it down on my cardstock. So I actually have videos um, kind of showing that technique. So I'll put a link in my description below. And then after that was dried, I stamped my butterfly and embossed in gold. And then I did the reverse image on scrap paper. I stamped him first on this one because I didn't want to have to cut around his body and all his feet. So I, I colored both wings the same and that was just using my aqua painter and ink pads and then I cut one wing and put it like glued it right on top and then the other wing as you can see I cut it out and I just added a little bit of glue down here so when you're looking at it from the side it's like pretty darn stunning if I can say so myself and then I had to add some bling because it's just wrong to have a card without bling and then I'm gonna be honest I added crystal effects on the top um, you can use fine tip glue but I came across a bottle 
brand new, never opened crystal effects that I bought um, when Stampin' Up! retired it. So yeah, retired, sorry. You can't get it anymore, maybe in craft stores, I don't know. But um, I love our crystal effects, but you can get the same look using the fine tip glue. Um, I just wanted to use that my, my crystal effects. So that's what I did on the top. And then of course, everything got spritzed with the champagne shimmer mist. But you could not have those butterflies on this card if you didn't know the mirror image technique. And on the inside, I have the flowers also using the mirror image. And then I used my um, aqua painters and ink pads. I've got rich razzleberry and blackberry and I think some heather. So it looks pretty with that gold embossing, doesn't it? So I was working on that last night and I had a lot of fun. And then of course I just, I pulled out my beads because it's been a while since I used them and I just, I felt like adding some beads for, for fun and because I really wanted to make this an extra special card for an extra special person. Okay, I'm pulling in another stamp set, this time Pampered Pets. So I'm doing exactly the same thing that I did with my donkey. So I'm inking this up, pressing down. I'm gonna give him another ink just to make sure it's really, really inky. Push that down. Now I'm putting a piece of basic white cardstock right on top. I'm gonna ink up my dog and stamp down. So guess what's happening? I am stamping on the front of my cardstock and pushing down on the mirror image behind the cardstock. So guess what that means? That means I can cut this out with the coordinating die or if it was an image with the coordinating punch. Let me show you. Okay, so got my die cutting machine and my number two plate, my clear plate, and my stamp image. Get out my die. So I'm gonna just position that right on top of my my stamp and put my plate on, run it through. And then look. <gasps> what the heck? Is that not the coolest thing? So now your die cuts or your punches, if you were to use a punch, are stamped going either direction. Mm -hmm. I know it. I know it, guys. It's pretty cool. Okay, remember I had mentioned earlier that you can use a window sheet for this technique? So that's what I'm gonna do for this last card. And you can do this for the mirror image, but just bear in mind, you won't get as crisp an outline image like I have on the other cards that I've used when you use the window sheets. But both the window sheets and the silicone craft mats work perfectly for the reflection technique, which is pretty much the same thing as the mirror technique. So I am having a lot of fun using all our different stamp sets. So I am going to pull in the Ride the Range for this card. And let me grab my stamp apparatus. So I'm gonna start with the cows and the horse. And I'm gonna put my window sheet right on top of the stamp apparatus. And then position my stamps just like that okay just using my black memento ink pad 
stamp down on that window sheet. I could have taken out that foam because these are our red rubber stamps and we don't really need this foam piece, but that's fine. So I'm going to take this out. While all those stamps are there, I'm going to put my cardstock in. I'm just going to slide it down just a little bit. That should be good. And then ink these up and stamp onto my card. I'm going to get this out of the way now. And then we're going to bring my window sheet back in and I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to line it up right underneath so that oops, you can see like everything's lined up perfectly and I'm just pushing down again. You don't want to rub too much because if you do that again, you're going to get a blurry um, outline. Okay. Lift it up. And now I've got the mirror image, but it also looks like a reflection. So let me show you how I'm going to finish this card. Okay, so I'm taking my balmy blue ink pad and our blending brush. And I'm just going to get some. And I'm just going to lightly go right across because I want this to look like a lake. I want it to look like water. Take my mossy metal this time and just dab some of that onto my block. I do that because with the old style of ink pads, it was easier to squeeze the lid to pick up the ink to put it on the top to pull your ink out. With our new uh, style ink pads, it's not as easy to do that. So if you ever wonder why sometimes I use the lid and sometimes I use the block, that's, that's why I do that. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up some of that mossy metal with my water painter and I'm just going to lightly go across kind of make a line and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to lightly add some green onto that water I don't want too much See how it's looking like it's reflecting onto the water. So I'm going to speed it up now while I finish coloring. Now I'm pulling in the sun from the high tide stamp set. I'm going to stamp the sun right here. And since I have my high tide stamp set out, I'm going to use the grass. So I don't think I had the camera running, but I pulled in my beautiful moment stamp set because I really wanted to use these birds on the card and look how perfect that is. This is what happens. I start stamping and I just get all these ideas. Okay, so I'm gonna use my mossy metal braided trim and I'm just gonna stick on some tear and tape. that card done and of course you can put this on a card base I just kept it just one layer with the whisper white and added that trim but isn't that fun with that reflective technique
I am sure that your head must be spinning with all the different ideas, especially if you've never seen the mirror image or the reflective technique before. And I hope you have a lot of fun with this. I think I've given you quite a few different ideas. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And as I mentioned when I shared this card, I have a really fun video where I use my blocks and ink pads and I will post that here for you. So you may want to go check that out. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Happy stamping.